so first thing we're going to do i already imported my clip but to import your clip press command i or control i if you need to split a clip just press shift control or command d and that splits it and then of course you can delete it all that so first thing we're going to do time for the timing i'm going to turn on frame blending and just click this twice and then we're going to do the same for the other clip press option command t or alt command t and this brings up time remap yeah but also if you need to do it a different way just right click it and then under time you can go to enable time remapping we need to click this button right here basically i'm going to match it with the beat so if i play my audio doom, doom. all right i can't even play it because i might get copyrighted but what you're going to do is click this button again and then you're going to do that for every single beat doom, doom. and then i'm going to make one at the end i want it to reverse so all you need to do is drag this backwards a little bit, and then it's gonna reverse. But once you play it back, it's not gonna do anything for real. But what we have to do is easy ease this. So you're gonna highlight over all these, and then you're gonna right click one of them, keyframe assistant, and then easy ease. And then once you play it back, you can see like it's velocity <laughs> a little bit. But what we have to do is we need to like do the graph. Click like the first keyframe or whatever, and then you're gonna go into your graph editor, and then it should look something like this. If it's on speed graph, you can just switch it to value graph. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this over here. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see a little bit more. And basically we want it to look something like that. But we want it to be like tight. So that should be good. We only need like a little bit of easing. So we're gonna do the same thing for this graph as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this graph. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this graph and so forth. And then once you play it back, it should look something like this. But it's low-key like stiff. So I'm going to delete this keyframe really quick at the end. And then I'm going to drag this over here. Now I'm going to play it back one more time. Okay, we're missing a beat. So I made another keyframe. You're going to have to easy ease this part again. So easy ease it. And then let's play it back. You can fix it. Okay, now it should like velocity of phi more. It's going to be off beat a little bit. So what I like to do is highlight over all these. And then I like to drag them back a few frames. And then it should be more in beat. For this part right here, I still want it to reverse. So I'm just going to move this back near the end of the clip. And I'm going to move this past that point where this cut is. And then if you want, you can do a tiny graph like this. And then once you play it back, yeah, it's going to look a lot better with shakes and motion blur. But other than that, we're done with the first clip. And then for the second clip, you're going to do the exact same thing. All right, once you have made a keyframe on every beat, what you're gonna do is easy ease them, and then you're going to do the same little graph. But if they're all selected, you can actually like just move it like that, and then all of them move at the same time. If you move this back some, it should be more on beat. And then of course, I'm gonna do a reverse at the end because reverses are just tough. But yeah, we're all done with the velocity. I think it looks pretty good. Now we're gonna get to the shakes. So before we do the shakes, what we're gonna do is actually pre-compose these. So just right click it and then you can do pre-compose right here. And then you're gonna do move all attributes into new composition. And then you're gonna press okay. You're gonna also pre-compose the second clip. The shortcut is shift command C and then you're gonna pre-compose it. For the shakes, make a new adjustment layer. So if you have like an empty space right here, just right click it, press new and then adjustment layer, or you can go up to layer new and then adjustment layer we're gonna like cut little snippets like this we can delete this access so what we're gonna do for the shakes is we're gonna use sapphire we're gonna use s underscore dissolve shake if you don't have sapphire i highly suggest watching other shake tutorials there's a lot of expressions and stuff i'm gonna save that for a future video first it's gonna start at like a higher amount so we can do like nine percent and then we can go to the end of the adjustment layer and then we're gonna change it to zero make sure you have keyframed it and all I have to do to keyframe it is hit the stopwatch, go to the end, and then just change it to zero. Now, after this, we're gonna do a graph and we're just gonna highlight over them, right click one of them, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then we're going to click one of them, hit the graph editor, and then we're gonna do a graph sort of like this. And we don't want it like too tight, unless that's the look you're going for. If you want, you can change the amplitude if you want it to be like harder, but what I'm gonna do is change the X shake I'm gonna maybe like, I'm gonna increase it just a little bit. And then for Y shake, I'm going to do like a lower amount, but still like high-ish. And then we're gonna change the Z shake. We're gonna increase that a little bit. And then we're gonna go under tilt shake. 
and increase that just a little bit. And then of course change the amplitude if you want. Before we add the rest of the shakes, I kind of want it to like zoom in. I think it adds a lot to the jug edit. So what we're gonna do is press S on the actual clip. You're gonna click the stopwatch. Now press P to bring a position, click the stopwatch. And then you're gonna press R if you want, and then just click the stopwatch. If you don't use it, it's all right. Press U on your keyboard to bring up all your keyframes. And then you're gonna go past your beat and it's gonna be around like here that we want it to be. You always wanna go past the beat because you don't want it to be stiff. But what we're gonna do is scale this up and then we're gonna like kind of position in on her. And then we want to like rotate just a little bit. And then where the beat is, if you have trouble looking for the beat, just look for the like fastest point of the edit, which is right here. Highlight them, easy ease them. You may have to move them as well. So it's like the lines in the middle, but we're gonna click the graph editor and then we're gonna change this to speed graph. Now, this is gonna pop up, right click the edge of this, and then we're gonna kinda like make a point. So the mountain should reach the blue line thing. <laughs> Highlight over this part and then drag it over here. But yeah, once you play it back, it should look something like that. And then after that, you can add a no layer. So then you can like zoom back out. So new, but other than that, what you wanna do is cut this first. So shift control or command D. And then you're going to link this to the null. So link it right there. And then turn on motion blur on the actual clip itself. On the no layer, we wanna make sure they're overlapping. So go in the middle of these keyframes. Press S, stopwatch, press P, stopwatch, press R, stopwatch. Press U, and then you're gonna go forward past this point right here, and then we're just gonna zoom back out and then rotate it if you need to. Oh, there's the edit in the background. Hey, I'm gonna do, let's see, okay, two is fine. And then we're just gonna put it back in place. And then you just wanna match the graph with the beat, the second beat, basically. And then we're just going to do a tight graph. And it should look something like this. All right, that should be good. After that, you can put these back up. You don't need them. We're just gonna duplicate this shake. So control or command D, and then we're gonna place it over the point of our second beat. So right here, and then press U if you have to see all your keyframes. And then we're gonna watch this back and it should look something like that, but we kind of want it to like build up. So we're gonna extend this and then we're gonna change this keyframe to zero. So the doll percentage should go from zero to nine back to zero. And then once you play it back, it should look something like that, but we kind of want to fix this. So we're going to change this to a lower percentage just so it's not like too much. And then also change the graph if you have to change this to value. And yeah, you may have to edit it because yeah, and just play around with the settings. I'm going to change the speed just a little bit. And then I'm going to change the settings on the X shape. I'm just trying different things, guys. And also, if you need to add motion tile, you can do that as well. I'm noticing the black stuff on the edges, so motion tile, add that to the clip, and then we're gonna change this to 200, and then this to 200, and then turn on mirror edges, of course. Now for the next part of this, I wanna add like a skew shape, kind of. So we're gonna make a new null layer. We're gonna link this null to the new null, and then we're gonna press S, remove this like, chain symbol thing and click the stopwatch button and then you're going to go forward a few frames and then what you're going to do is increase the scale of it we're going to increase this scale and then we're going to go forward a few four from ooh, go forward a few more frames and then squish it like in some and then go forward more and then we're going to go out a little bit more than 100 but not too much and then we're going to change it back to 100. it should squeeze now so yeah but if you want it to look a little bit better, add um, a graph. If you want to move them tighter together, you can do that as well. Yeah, so you should get like a little bouncy shake. Easy ease them, and then you should get a shake like that. So yeah, keep adding the shakes, and then you should get more of a jug edit. And then I suggest making all the shakes like a little bit different, so it's not like repetitive, if that makes sense. If you want to do like that scale out, like, Thing with the jug what you can do is you can make a keyframe right before the shake click the stopwatch and then go forward one frame and then you're gonna just zoom in as much as you want and then you're gonna go forward like a few more frames and then just scale back out to the original position or scale you can easy ease these you can just do a graph like this and then you should get something like this yeah all right guys so I have finished the first part of the edit it looks pretty cool do, 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 do. after you finish that part um, I'm just gonna pre compose all these actually so what I'm gonna do is move this all the way to the top real quick click the top layer click the bottom layer while holding shift so hold shift 
and then press shift control C. And then what you're gonna do is just pre-compose it. And then, yeah. Now to transition these, what I'm gonna do is press S, click the stopwatch, and then I'm going to scale this out. But first I have to add motion tile, and then I'm gonna change this to 300 this time. And then 300, mirror edges, press U, and then I'm just gonna scale this out. Press S again if you have to, and then boom. And then of course turn on motion blur, and then we're gonna move this keyframe right there. Highlight over them, easy ease them, and then change this to value graph. And then you're going to do a graph like this. And you may have to move this keyframe back one frame. And then to finish it, press S on the second clip, click the stopwatch, like a few frames forward, and then go to the beginning, and then you can just scale it in. And then it should scale out like that. If the keyframes are like closer together, it'll be faster. And then after that, I'm going to put these right here, just like this. And make sure motion blur is turned on. Yeah, just mess around with the graph. It sometimes likes to act weird, so. And then also, if you need to zoom in more, you can do that as well. Now, I'm just gonna pre-compose this. And then what I'm gonna do is do the same exact thing that I did in the beginning, but this time, I'm just gonna do like scale, position, and rotation, and all the other shakes on this side of the edit. So yeah. And also, you guys don't have to add motion blur if you don't want. I know some drug edits don't use motion blur, but I like my edits with motion blur. I can't do it. I can't do no motion blur, y'all. Now I'm gonna add a no layer. Connect this. The audio's like glitching right here. Like, rat rat. It's, it's, I can't explain it, but anyways, it like glitches. So to do that like scale thingy, we're going to use this no layer and then we're just going to scale this out. But first, you need to add motion tile to your clip again if you don't have it on there already. And we're gonna change this to 300, change this to 300, and then mirror edges. Now, you're gonna start to zoom out and then instead of you know, finishing the transition, it's gonna like repeat itself basically. Press Y, and then after that, you're going to use the value graph and do an out graph. So now, you're gonna move this over here, and it should be the last frame that it really starts to like zoom out, so I'm gonna scale this out just a little bit more. And then I'm going to do a graph like this, and then before it starts glitching, move this keyframe over some, just right, right there is fine. And now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically make the zoom out repeat edit where it starts glitching so right here pre-compose this part of the edit so pre-compose it and yeah so it should look something like that but what we have to do is we're gonna press s also make sure motion blur is enabled if you're doing that you're gonna click stopwatch and you're just gonna zoom it in and then you're gonna go out and then you're gonna go forward one frame so one frame and then you're gonna just zoom it back in and then you're gonna go forward a few frames zoom it all the way out and then since it's repeating again Go forward one frame, zoom in all the way in, and then zoom it out. And you could do this however many times you want. It should look something like this, yeah. And then after that, you can just continue with the edit. If you need to like scale this back in, you can do that. So click the stopwatch, and then just scale this back in, and also change the rotation if you have to, and yeah. All right, so now I'm just making this clip zoom back out. And then I'm just gonna pre-compose this so we don't like, just so we're more organized. And then after that, we're gonna add the shakes again. And if you want, you can click the pre-composition, copy this shake, and then just like paste it in here. And it should be over here. And then you can put this on top. And then of course, add motion blur again. Not motion blur, motion tile, sorry. And then change this to 200 or 300. You know what, I'm gonna do 200 mirror edges. And then I'm gonna press U. And then I'm just gonna see how this looks. And then I'm gonna see if I wanna add another like scale squish thing. And I'm just gonna make a stopwatch toward the end. And I'm just going to squeeze it in and then it like pop out. All right guys, so I have finished the entire edit and all we have to do is add extra effects now. Um, I hope this part wasn't too hard, but if you wanted to like copy some of the settings of these shakes, here they are. I don't really have like exact amounts. I low-key like experimented, but please, please, please just mess around with X, Y, Z, and tilt. It's really about just like trying different things, so yeah. And also there's like a dead frame at the end, and like I hate it, but 
Anywho, we're gonna pre-compose these. So now we have part one, and then we also have part two. Now for these, what we're gonna do is make another adjustment layer. So adjustment layer, and then we're gonna be using my favorite effects that I use for Jug, and that's gonna be Exposure, Minimax, and CC Wide Time. So what we're gonna do is first add Minimax, and then we're just gonna make a keyframe, click the stopwatch for radius, go forward a few frames, and then change it to zero. And with this one, it like adds exposure itself, so that's cool. But yeah, you really don't need to add a graph for that one. You can duplicate this, and then you can place it on top of other areas of the edit. So I don't recommend using like a lot, but add it in some places, just so it's like, yeah. Like right here would be a good time as well. Now I'm gonna make another adjustment layer, but this time it's going to be for exposure. This one you can add a graph if you want, so it can easy ease. And also I recommend like extending this and then making it go from zero to one and then back to, you know, zero. So then it like flashes. If I duplicate this and then I put this over a different part, but also it might be too high, so you can lower it. Also to make this loop, I'm gonna like scale this out. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, just copy and paste the adjustment layers, and then we get a nice cool effect. Last effect that I really like to add to my jug edits, CCY time, and I don't know, I don't know, I just love CCY time. It's just one of those effects. And I like to change this to zero, and then I change the backward step to around like, maybe like five, three or five, and then I press on, and then I'm gonna change this to three, because it's a little too much. But yeah, make sure data motion blur's on, and then it like does like, yeah, it's like an echo for real, so. That's what I like about it, but so yeah, um, the edit is basically done. I'm just gonna add some R, some B, and some panning, and then of course CC. Just pre-compose all of this, and then after that, you can add some R, S, and B, and then also play around with the frame rate. Change the composition's frame rate to like 24 is a good number. Not too bad, honestly. Add some panning. I'm gonna pre-compose this, and then of course, once you do that, you can add some flicker. I'm going to add one more adjustment layer and then I'm going to add some CC and then you're done. But yeah, guys, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.